Hi, welcome to another Base14 tutorial with Base14.com. I, once again, am Tyler Kupfer, and today I'm going to be talking about how to paint hand-drawn animation in Adobe Flash. Now, I recently did another tutorial about how to make hand-drawn animation, and promised that I'd be back explaining how, uh, with our film, The Girl and the Fox, we created the paint effect uh, that we used throughout the film. So I'm going to show you a little bit of inside secret of how we got that effect. Now, the way we stylize this specifically is what I call contourless, uh, contourless animation style. So it's all painted and it's all colorized, but there are no black contour lines that you would normally see uh, in hand-drawn animation. And it takes a little bit of uh, extra technique to get this style, but it's uh, pretty straightforward to get uh, using Flash or other programs. The style is becoming a bit more popular nowadays, the way that it's being integrated into 3D uh, rendering. And uh, so uh, I I think you'll find this tutorial pretty helpful. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here I've got my uh, starting file. Uh, you can follow along if you download the files that are uh, included with the blog post that's linked uh, below in the article description. Now, the way that we uh, used our pipeline was that we would draw uh, normally all the hand-drawn part first and uh, create it all with lines, and then that would be passed off to a painter that would use this uh, line animation in order to create the hand uh, hand painted part. Uh, we broke this up into two different layer uh, folder structures. There's the cleanup, um, which is uh, the cleaned up animation, and then we have another folder that's paint. And we split that into three other separate layers. Uh, paint, which is just the main uh, colors, pupils, and I'll talk about a little bit about that more in a moment, and then the face details, which are the nose, the mouth, and all that. Uh, we just find it useful to uh, keep the face painting separate from the, uh, the rest of the geometry. So the first step is to uh, uh, duplicate all of the uh, frames that were created in the animation. So I select blocks of the timeline here and hit F7 to create a whole bunch of empty keyframes. But I make sure that I'm duplicating the timing exactly uh, so that way while I'm painting this it will uh, match all the hard work that the animator has already done. F5, just to extend the frame. Now, the strategy that we like to use is uh, to start with the eyes, because that's the easiest part. And uh, one uh, stylistic choice that we made in this film is to make the eyes symbols. In Flash, a symbol is a pre-made saved object. And uh, that those are just duplicated. So the eyes are the one thing that we don't draw over and over again. And the reason for that is because eyes are such an important part of a character, and it's so distinguishable, so it's very detectable when the eyes are changing shape. So we actually use a symbol so that the eyes are very uh, regular. So what I would do is I would go through and I would copy this frame. I'm holding down Alt and dragging on the frame over and over again across the entire timeline. I'm just going to do the first couple of frames because uh, we want to keep this fast. So then once I have all the eyes copied, I go through and I just start individually moving them one by one based on what the animator did. So because it's a symbol, this allows me to uh, not have to draw it over and over again. I am, however, moving it by hand. And the reason for that is that the human eye is so good at detecting computer-created tweens, so uh, tweened motion animation that a computer has drawn, it's too perfect. And uh, our style, we want to look organic. That's why we're painting it all by hand. So we still reposition the eyes by hand so you, we get a little bit of that human imperfection. The one thing I am going to do is on this frame, she closes her eyes. Uh, so I'm going to delete the pupils there because we don't need them. The next step is to um, start painting the base colors here on the paint layer. So I'm going to lock the eye layer now that it's done. And I'm going to move on to this. Uh, a trick that we use in order to be able to uh, see what we're painting better is we hit this little square here, which turns the cleanup animation into an outlines mode, and it makes a little uh, lighter gray, and I've made that layer gray, so that way it's sort of ghosted, you might say. Next, what I can do is uh, I just start by using the original frame that the art director made, and I select the initial hood color, and that allows me to start painting uh, these outlines. And if I was doing uh, normal animation, I'd paint a bunch of black outlines and just fill in the colors. But because we're doing this contourless style, we have to paint our contours based on the color uh, that is the main fill. So, 
Uh, I'm going to make sure I have my paintbrush selected. I'm going to make sure I'm on the right layer, the paint layer. And then I've got my uh, pressure and tilt sensitivity turned on. And another thing we're going to use a lot are these different brush modes. So right now I can use paint normal, but we're going to be switching this quite a bit. Now I just start to use my stroke. Now I'm using a Cintiq for this, but you can also use uh, any other pressure sensitive tablet like a uh, Intuos or a Bamboo tablet. Definitely Intuos and Cintiq are the more professional standards. Now another trick that I found that I, that's really important with Flash is Flash gives you results always directly based on your zoom level. So drawing when I'm way more zoomed in gets me a much better line quality than when I'm zoomed out. You can see the uh, ruggedness of this line because I drew it when I was more zoomed out compared to this line, uh, which is a bit smoother. So when I'm doing cleanup and flash, excuse me, when I'm doing paint and flash, uh, I tend to work at a very zoomed in level and I also tend to make my strokes slowly. So I only have to do it once. Uh, I'm going to have to go a little bit faster for this tutorial, but you get the idea. Once I've made that hood, I can start uh, selecting other parts of the geometry. And here's the next step. Once you've, start, uh, once you've started to draw other or one part, you want to switch your brush to paint behind. So that way I can actually paint over top of the line, but the uh, color goes behind it. And that means that I don't destroy anything that I've already done. I have to keep in mind where one color of object starts and where another color of object begins. So I have to keep in mind that this scarf is this dark gray color and her coat is the brown color. So it is a bit more advanced uh, than just your regular black ink technique. At this point, I'm just going to speed through the rest of these colors so we can get on to the next step of the process. Okay, so I've got all these initial outlines drawn on the paint layer. You'll notice that I used the uh, skin flesh tone for the hair, even though the hair is black, because it doesn't matter if I use the hair color or the flesh color, as long as it's one of those that defines the boundaries. What I can do now is I can start filling in uh, this color. So I grab the paint bucket, I open up the color picker, and I pick the uh, brown color of her hat. I go ahead and fill that in, and that's actually the same color as the coat, so I'm going to fill that in too. 
this color picker is really laggy on my computer. And uh, if it helps, you can delete all these color palettes and it'll make it uh, pop up a lot faster. Another thing you'll notice is that if I try to do color pick from too far away, it might actually give me the wrong color because Flash bases it on the actual display pixels and not uh, the vector data. Great, now I filled in all of my outlines that I've made, and I'm done for now with the paint layer. So I'm going to lock it. Now I'm going to move up to the face layer, which is where I want to add the eyebrows, the nose, and the mouth. What we have to do now is make the paint layer slightly invisible or see-through so that we can see the face details. So I'm going to hit this box again and shift the paint layer to outlines, and now I can start working on the face layer. Again, I'm going to jump back to the reference frame in order to get the right colors. In this case, it's just black. And the face is always the part that you want to be the most detailed on. So don't be afraid to undo and take your time. And on the eyebrows especially, instead of doing it all in one stroke, I try to make do it with outlines first, so that way I can be extra sensitive to the size and the diameter. Another trick that I found helps me is that when I'm doing these little tiny details and I want to get the edges just right, I can go back with the eraser tool and sort of thin them out so that way I can get more fine edges. And then we'll just finish up the mouth. Great. One other feature that's important here on the face layer is creating a cover-up for these eyes. As you can see, her eyes aren't actually completely opened in this picture. They're slightly closed. So that's another reason why the face layer is on top of the pupils. I actually want to draw lines to represent the tops of her pupils, and then there are no lines on the bottom stylistically. But I do need that flesh tone in order to make it look like the pupils are being covered up. So I'm just going to draw sort of a dummy cover and then make sure I'm on paint behind and then paint, paint up here as well to cover up the tops of the eyes. Great. Now it looks like that she's squinting. Go ahead and fill in the eyebrows here and my face details are done. Now, the final step that I have to add is my shading. We found that when we do have contourless style, it's harder to make the characters seem three-dimensional without uh, tones and shading on them at all times. So, we needed a way to replicate shading across these forms. The good news is that using these uh, different fill tactics for the paintbrush gives us some good options, specifically paint inside. Paint inside will make your line only exist where on whatever fill you start painting on top of. So what we can do is we can select this highlight color from the reference frame. We can paint on top of the face, and it will only apply to that area. Now what I need to do is use this option down here, Onion Skin Outlines, in order to see the shading that's on previous frames. So I turn on that, and the shading's behind that, and I change this screen into Outlines, and now we're in this sort of mythical world where I can see the current frame as well as this lighter pink color which represents the previous frame. And now, since I know I'm painting inside of that current fill, I can use this to judge where my current highlight should be. And if I turn that back on, I can see that I've only painted uh, the edge of that highlight. And when I grab my fill bucket, ta-da, there's my highlight as whole. No contour lines required. I'll go ahead and duplicate that for the rest of the highlights.
Great! So now I have my highlights added. The one other thing that I still need to add are some of these finer details that define the overlapping of three-dimensional forms here. So if you look, and I need to turn off my outlines onion skin, there's a couple of lines that define the folds in her scarf. That's pretty much the same strategy that we used for our shading. I select that color, I move over to the paint layer of my next frame, and then I make sure that I've got my paintbrush selected, I'm on paint inside. I switch this to outlines, I find where the animator has made that geometry, and then I just make very fine strokes. Right there. Now at this point, you have two options. You could go through every single frame and do that same process over and over again, drawing every frame individually. But what we found is that it was faster and more efficient, as well as giving you better results, in order to draw one feature at a time. It's a bit more monotonous that way, but it's better quality-wise. So what you would do, for example, is just like I started out by drawing this hood first, I would go to this frame and draw this line, of course much slower. I'd go to this frame, draw the line, go to this frame, draw the line. And the reason why this gives me more accurate results is I'm drawing this line so often, it kind of becomes embedded in my muscle memory. And once I would do a whole pass of that, I'd go back and I'd do the hair, I'd go back and I'd do the eyes, I'd go back and do whatever, etc., etc., etc. A couple other things to note. Um, make sure that your smoothing for your paintbrush is definitely below 50. 20 is a good number, 10 is a good number. Uh, if you set it all the way to, down to zero, your files will get phenomenally large. So I would discourage you from doing that. But 20 is a nice medium. And remember to always keep those zoom levels pretty high. You'll get better results the closer you are. Well, that's about it for this tutorial. You just have to keep it up, essentially, and eventually you can get something that looks really nice and you're ready to take into a compositing program like After Effects later. Uh, let me know if you have any questions on the comment section, and uh, until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>